Hi, I'm Erica Film My Phone, and welcome to another video. Today we're getting back into Madonna, this time with bedtime stories. For the first time in a long time, I'm actually filming a reaction in the middle of the day. So it's kind of odd that it's bedtime stories, but I'm sure we'll make it work just fine. This is her sixth studio album released in 1994. This goes just after Erotica and Life of Prayer before that. And I think it's the only one that's in between Erotica and Ray of Light. So I know a lot of the albums around this time, just not this one in particular. So I'm excited to dive into it with you all. Track number one is Survival. Beep beep. <laughs> I'll never be an angel or a saint. Ooh. Oh, I'm too busy surviving. Here's my question, what is it? You give me respect, you know what to expect, period. So that was survival and a chill way to start the album. It was very laid back, it was groovy R&B influence. I feel like the lyrics are ahead of its time, really in that it feels like you know she's going through the motions and having to deal with surviving in the world. And I feel like, I don't know, it just speaks to me in our political turmoil. It feels very much a song that could be tied to like women's empowerment or women's struggles in particular. And she's saying she's not going to be a saint or an angel about things, but she's going to, you know, do the work to advocate for those that are struggling and advocate for herself when she's struggling. I also see the song connecting a lot to Swim from Ray of Light about really just making it through and how you just have to. And yeah, I feel, I feel the song. Sonically, it's all right. It's not something that wows me. It feels like a more chill vibe, but lyrically, I think she's opening the album off on a very telling note. Track number two is Secret. Ooh. Starting with some acoustic guitar. Things haven't been the same since you came into my life. Ooh, I love how the beat came in there. This beat sounds very familiar. I can't tell if it was on Erotica or on Raya Light, but somewhere in the 90s. RuPaul, <laughs> did you steal it? <laughs> that was Secret, and that was a lovely song. I really like that as a groovy song. I'm surprised it was the lead single when I looked it up. I, I, I've never heard any song that was on this album. So I was like, oh, this one has a lot of plays. It feels like a song to me that would be a deep track, but then the people would like it and I don't know, it would go viral on TikTok or something like that. It feels like it would be a chosen song to like rather than the industry push for a song to like. More groovy, it's more R&B, maybe that is just the whole vibe of the record, but I like it. I think lyrically it's pretty simple of a sense of intimacy that is done by sharing your secrets and communicating and, you know, finding love in a partner. It doesn't feel as telling as survival, for example, or much of like a prayer, which is still on my mind since I reacted to it just a couple weeks ago. But I do enjoy this song. It is, again, a groovy track that I could see going into the rotation of, I don't know, chill songs to vibe to. Their vocals and the production are very nice to hear, so I enjoy it. I guess I'm basic then. Track number three is I'd Rather Be Your Lover. Okay, we're continuing in this groovy vibe. I'd even be your brother. Oh, <laughs> crossing boundaries. That's not Madonna. Could even be your brother, but I rather be your lover. Are you surprised? Oh, is this a confession? So that was I'd Rather Be Your Lover. And that was a groovy song. I feel like the chorus, she used it so many times that it's definitely gonna get stuck in my head. It is a well done chorus. Although I am a little confused on the being a sister and someone's mother, but then also being like, I'd rather be your lover. Okay, I don't like keeping it all in the family, let's just say that. I love her breaking the gender confines by saying I don't even be your brother. Okay, it's not her first choice, but it's still a choice that she could make. The song is really just, you know, wanting someone who maybe it's not going to work out because of something unattainable, you know? It seems like she's dreaming of this person and 
they're out of reach somehow. I really like the guest feature. I'm surprised that it's not just credited on Spotify or anything like that, but it was Michelle and Diego Cello. I had never heard of him before, but I liked his voice a lot. Apparently the original rap verse was from Tupac, which apparently he and Madonna at some point had relations. I really don't know my 20th century pop culture history at all. So I'm glad I'm learning that now. I'm glad that Michelle is on this track for reasons I have learned, as well as I also just really like his voice. It was a good like sultry, it worked with the R&B vibe. So uh, I enjoyed the song. I think over time I started liking it more, but it is a bit repetitive. I kind of wish maybe it was like a little more of like a three, three and a half minute vibe rather than a nearly five minute vibe. But I enjoyed it nonetheless. I also think I'm starting to get the vibe and the feel of the vibe. It's a laid back, chill vibe. It's not something where we are going rapid fire, not something to pump our adrenaline, not something that's going to, I don't know, shock us as much. So I'm, you know, I'm in for a chill time. I've needed some time to <laughs> recover. So yeah, let's recover. Track number four is Don't Stop featuring Daniel Abraham. This feels like a Radio Disney slow song. <laughs> like early 2000s, right there. Everything is grooving. I feel like it should be a little more up-tempo than this. And I feel like this is begging for a remix. So that was Don't Stop. And that was a nice track. It's about, you know, don't stop moving on the dance floor. Let's, everybody's grooving, everybody's moving. It was very slow. And I was just very surprised about it. I don't know what the 90s club dance scene was, but I need like a beat that's a little more than that. That was a nice groove and I could chill, but I don't feel like that song should have a chill vibe. It should feel a little, I don't know, pumped up. I want to like get excited about it. I don't know, it's begging for a remix in my opinion. I liked it sonically, but... I don't know if it's going to be something that I want to turn to all that often. I also found out that Daniel Abraham is obviously not a vocalist on the track, but a DJ that helped rework some of the original production of it. And I think it's odd to have him being credited specifically on Spotify, but not having Michelle from before who actually vocalizes on it. It's not me trying to be rude to producers. I believe producers deserve a lot of credit. You guys do a lot of amazing work. But I do find it odd that it's not consistent that vocalists are necessarily getting credited when they do have a standout feature on it. So, I don't know, it's odd. See, this seems like a normal speed, but this is 1.25 times. And it already makes me more excited about it. And then in 1.5, like, I'm like, ooh, this is 2000's core. So yes, I would actually really like the song if it was remixed and probably would routinely play it because it's a good vibe otherwise. But I think it's too slow for me to follow the instructions that she is providing in the song. Check number five is Inside of Me. She's finding the secrets in her memories. Okay, tying it back to her earlier track. Foolish people try to bring me down. Ooh, gee, spilling. Ooh. She's harmonizing, but the harmonies are not working through the speaker. Ooh, okay, moment. What is this clarinet going off on? Sorry, that whisper <laughs> caught me off guard. So that was Inside of Me, and that was a quiet, groovy number. It was good. Apparently it has an Aaliyah sample in it, which maybe that's why that group felt a bit familiar. That clarinet, I don't know where it came from, but that was kind of disturbing, the, the quiet, calm vibes of it. It was definitely keeping me on my toes, but... It was an alright song. I looked it up and it seems like it might be more about a memory of her mother rather than a memory of a past loved one. It seems much more of a permanent final watching over me. You know, someone has not on this mortal plane anymore. So yeah, I do feel for her. Again, my apologies go out to anyone who's lost loved ones lately. Yeah, it's hard. I'm getting a pretty sonically cohesive record, but I'm glad that this song, like the first song, Survival, we're getting a little bit of lyrical depth as well. Track number six is Human Nature. Express yourself, don't oh, express yourself, call back. Yourself, don't repress yourself, hey. Express yourself, express yourself. We love repetition here, I guess. 
I really have no idea what's going on right now. Oh. Oh. Oh, that bang. It's human nature. Okay. So true. Oh no, she had a point of view. Oh, acapella moment. Why don't you just deal with it? So that was human nature, and gosh, it was human nature of me to want something. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Madonna, for making the statement several years ago. Human nature is basically a lyrical F you to everyone who has criticized her for being too provocative in her previous era with erotica. And I think also her book, Sex, came out at the same time-ish. So yeah, people were like, oh, everyone was clutching their pearls and all that, I'm sure. I don't know. I was negative five at this time. But although this record doesn't have as many explicit references, she's saying she's not apologizing for that direction that she went to before. And while I personally haven't heard anything from Madonna since Erotica that is more explicit than Erotica, that doesn't mean that she should be ashamed of that era. It's a definitely a very empowering era. Pretty feminist of her. And I mean, today, <laughs> those lines would fly a lot easier. She also points out the double standard that men talk about expression and enjoying romantic and physical intimacy with other people and women are not allowed to enjoy that and I think she's speaking the truth here and I really appreciate how blunt she is about it. I really appreciate a lot of the bluntness in her lyrics. She does not care to tie up in flowery prose. She is going to tell you exactly how she feels about it. Express yourself, don't repress yourself. It is a very to the point track and I really appreciate it. I assume this would have probably started the second half of the record, given that Inside of Me is so, I don't know, Inside of Me to Human Nature is a big jump in terms of tone, in terms of vibes, that I feel like you would want to start with Human Nature on the other side. Yeah, I really appreciate the sentiment. It's a busy moment, especially compared to the previous songs that have been fairly chill and laid back. I wasn't really mentally prepared for something that would be that uh, chaotic and that cluttered. I do love maximalism and cluttered songs often, but I just wasn't in the headspace for it. So I think I'll have to listen to it again before I figure out whether it's a song I want to keep in my rotation, but I really applaud her for being honest, for standing her ground, and for being that girl. Check number seven is called Forbidden Love. I know that there's a one on Confessions of the Dancer also called Forbidden Love. That is the only thing I know about the song is that she later reused the title for another song. Okay, we're back into groove land. I don't care if it's not right. Okay, she really not given any. You kiss Forbidden Love. Ooh. Okay, background vocals. So that was Forbidden Love and it's a song about wanting what you can't have and the yearning of it. And I'm a yearner certified yearner over here and yeah it's a nice chill vibe it doesn't leave a strong impression on me i kind of just grooved and vibed to it but yeah it is a good song for the record definitely fits within the sonic cohesion of this album this album with the exception of human nature is extremely sonically cohesive and that can be a double-edged sword as in you get one consistent vibe and you're experiencing a good flow state but on the downside there's not as many surprises and jumps and things to latch on to that are new. But I'm enjoying, I'm having a chill moment. I'm feeling almost a little bit meditative right now. Track number eight is Love Tried to Welcome Me. What a title. Ooh, I love this strumming, it's gorgeous. Oh, that was a good drop. <laughs> there are my eyes, but I cannot see. Usually drawn to sadness, girl. <laughs> Only unless it's ever been a stranger. Wow. Moody. They whisper sorrow. Ooh, she is in her feels. This song just sounds like a nice bright fuchsia. I don't know how to describe it other than that. My 
my soul drew back from the walk off. Oh. So it was Love Trying to Welcome Me. That was a gorgeous song. And like towards the end, I started feeling a little like, oh, I don't know. Five minute songs, they can be real good if they are really capturing me. But I feel like a trend in the 90s in general is that songs go on for a while to let you feel them out. And then you could edit them for club things or for the radio or whatever. But yeah, this song was fairly long, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. It was a beautiful color in my head. And the chorus seems to have come from a poem that was by an Anglican minister. I'm not very familiar with, and so I'm not gonna reference a bunch of religious things except for the fact that she does routinely reference religious things in her work, most notably with Like a Prayer. But yeah, I, it's cool to see her continue to do that on this project that really hasn't touched too much into religious territory much, or even taking a lot of religious imagery. But it's really interesting to see it here. And yeah, I think of the slower songs that we've been hearing on this project, I think this one is up there. I do like that uh, concept. It is definitely very sorrowful, mournful. Maybe it goes with the somber tones of religious imagery, but I found something in it. I'm not quite sure exactly what emotion I felt in it, but I felt something connecting me to it. So I enjoyed it. Track number nine is a Sanctuary featuring Nelly Hooper. I'm pretty sure Nelly Hooper was just a primary producer across a lot of this record. So I don't know why they're getting credited right here, but better late than never. I can't hear what she's whispering. I feel like we're waking up with sunrise. Oh, that was a drop. Slower than I thought it was gonna be. It's in your arms, I wanna be buried. Okay, that's a little dramatic. Is all this pain so necessary? Probably not. I like that twinkling that we're getting for the outro. Oh my god, wait, are we transitioning? So Sanctuary, and that was just a nice chill track about saying that this person is their sanctuary, that that's who they want to be buried with, that they just want to follow that love. We took some lines from Lisa Grass from Walt Whitman. We love the transcendentalist movement. And those lines talk about how they're gonna follow the person who speaks to them in the right voice and, you know, the waves follow the moon and, I don't know, a lot of nature imagery, which is cool and definitely makes it feel more outside. I'm most impressed about, uh, they're doing the nice smooth transition to the next song, which will be track number 10, Bedtime Story, basically the title track. I'm very excited to get into it. I think Sanctuary was good, but I think it definitely just continues the movement of these lightly romantic, not super deeply personal songs that are more chill and laid back. So let's see if that trend continues on the title track. I also love this synth, it's really nice. Oh, today's your last day, gosh. Okay. We gotta pick it up. Okay, yeah, I hit the bass drum. Let's get unconscious, <laughs> mood. Yeah. I love how it feels like it's all under the surface, but you feel the texture moving. I'm gonna relax. We're all still wet. Tense. I'll never explain again. I'll never explain again. Oh, ominous. So that was Bedtime Story. What a fun song. And it makes a lot of sense how groovy the song is. This song was written by Bjork. Oh! <laughs> this album sounds nothing like Bjork, but this song feels very much like that. I mean, I think the Let's Get Unconscious repeated, I was like, that doesn't sound like something that Madonna would directly write. And it's not, it's something that Bjork wrote. And then Madonna, you know, she put her own spin on it, of course. But, huh, that's wild. I really like how groovy it is. It picks up the pace a bit. There's something definitely very like intriguing about it. It reminds me of early Bjork, which makes me really want to finish Bjork's discography as well. Yeah, this song was fun. And it's really about saying like, let's not think about logic. Let's just like be unconscious. Let's 
just tap into our intuition, just vibe. And that's something that I can relate to in Bjork's photography, something I can relate to in Madonna's discography, something I can relate to in my own life. It's a good song. I'm surprised how much of a, I don't know, secret it is on the album. It's track 10. And it doesn't seem like it's one that gets played too much, but I really like it. Apparently there's a music video for it that's really expensive and was really well done. So much so that it's permanently displayed in the Museum of Modern Art, which I visited. I don't remember this music video, so I have to go return to check that out or react to it. I also want to react to more music videos from Madonna because, I mean, she's the queen of pop for a reason. I'm sure some of it is visually inclined and I really have only done the Confessions of the Dance Floor as well as American Life. So I really don't know what I'm missing yet. So yeah, I'll definitely have to check those out. If you are interested, let me know which videos from this project or from another Madonna project I should react to. But I really like this song. This is a good vibe. And I don't know. Yeah, they renewed some energy in this project. Rock number 11, last check on this album, Take a Bow. Ooh, twinkly. Sounds like from like an old romance movie. This masquerade is getting older. Do you mean what you say? You gotta express yourself, not repress yourself. Oh, is this an end of a relationship song? Get to the part where you're breaking my heart. Shoot, Renata. The show is over, say goodbye. Ugh. This makes me wonder what a remix with Take a Bow from Rihanna and this one would sound like. So that was Take a Bow, and that was a chill vibe to close out the album. It made sense, you know, a roll credits moment of, you know, the end of the relationship, all of this love and declarations of love. It's over now, and it's also the end of the record and, you know, saying goodbye. I also just found out that this is her longest running number one in the U.S. And I've never heard it. I don't think I've ever, ever heard of it. I don't think so. It's, I just don't think it gets referenced that much. It was seven weeks, number one. Like, I don't know why. I guess 1994 might not have been as competitive then. I don't know. Maybe it was just between eras for other people because I don't see how some of her other works haven't gone longer and also why this one has gone long. It's a good song, but it's not gonna be one that would stand out for me. I, I don't know. It doesn't stand out to me, so I guess people are just like getting a mellow, chill vibe at the time. With that said, we have finished this album, and I don't think this is my favorite project from Madonna. This is not a roast or a diss of her, but I think this one wasn't really made for me. It was made before I was born, so that'll do that. But I don't know. It doesn't feel as impactful. I think she was in a reflective state. She's in a bit of a romantic state. But with the exceptions of human nature and bedtime story and secret, I like secret. Yeah, like the rest of them, they do just feel chill and not like she's making any grand statements. Not that she needs to. Pop music doesn't always have to make big statements. But I feel like before and after this time, we've seen her do more progressive work, more interesting work. I feel like some of these ballads that are about this romantic vibe she was doing on erotica, like Rain. I really like that song. And it's still pretty mid-tempo, but it is a little bit faster than I think a lot of these songs. And then I think she hones a lot of this on Ray of Light, which means that for me, while this project is still a good project, it doesn't feel that memorable within an icon like Madonna's discography. I also don't really see the meaning of the title in the thing, except for maybe that they're slow and so it's chill and you could fall asleep to it. I could see myself if I needed to listen to an album by Madonna while trying to go to bed, and I don't try to listen to music when going to bed, but if I was forced to, I would probably pick this one of the ones I've heard so far, because all, all the other ones get a little chaotic. It's true. I like that about her because she is a singular artist. This album also feels like one that doesn't feel as original to her. Bedtime Story is really good, and it's more unique, but it is more Bjork. And Human Nature is definitely a statement, but I would probably wake up from being lulled into my slumber from the other songs. So it's really not the project that is, for me, it feels very transitional. I feel like she did work like this a bit in Erotica and a bit like this in Ray of Light. And this one kind of just gets put in the middle and it's an unfair placement because those are two 
really iconic albums. Every artist that is going to have a decent amount of output is allowed to put out music that is simply good rather than world breaking. That doesn't mean I have to fully regularly listen to it. I don't think I will. It's also really slow generally. I think I would like this album a lot more if it was like 1.25 times speed the whole time. Yeah, I think the BPM could get higher for it to be just, I don't know, a jam groove. It's I'm not a slow jam person, so this is for the slow jam crowd probably, and I'm not that crowd. So while I again respect all the work that she's done, this one's really not as much for me, and I think I'll be okay with that. We'll see in due time if it ends up changing for me, but for now, I'm pretty like lukewarm on this record. Oh, with that said, here are some of my favorites. So the top tier are the standouts, the ones I'm going to play over and over again, the ones I'm going to really take as the highlights from the project. Songs in the Miller, songs I like, I'll have them to my playlist with them at, that'll be the top of the top. Maybe a song I don't skip, but not necessarily a song I necessarily turn to. And then songs at the bottom are just not really my thing. Doesn't mean it's a bad song, doesn't mean it can't be your favorite song, just means it's not for me. And that's okay. I was negative five when this album came out and I'm still getting into R&B vibes. And I tend to like a lot more of the, I don't know, up tempo R&B songs that are coming out or ones that have a little more surprise in the lyrics or something like that. I gotta have something that breaks it out of that chill slow jam and I don't feel that always the case on this record. If you like this video please like it, please comment down below what you like to react or do next on my channel. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not ready and you'd like to be and thanks for watching. This is Chill Charmer, catch you later. Yeah. Uh -huh.